One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Are we live? I think we are. All right, I'm excited. So first, let me just check, make sure y'all can see me, y'all can hear me. Let me know in the commentos. You know how we do this. I'm just gonna check to make sure I'm live. It looks like I am. But can you see me? Can you hear me clearly? That's what's most important. Um, if you bear with me just for two minutes, uh, let me know where you're from. Let me know how you're feeling. Uh, I'm going to, oh, okay, I see myself. Let me just pin it to the top of this group page, pin. I'm gonna be hosting a few watch parties, so just give me like two minutes. I'm turning on Instagram. But in the meantime, chat amongst yourselves in the comments. No, but seriously, I wanna know like where you're from, how you're feeling, are you excited about tonight's live? Let me just host this watch party real quick. And um, that way other people can see this. Oh, and, and while I'm doing that, actually, this is like a perfect time. While I am <clears throat> hosting a watch party in different groups, um, so everyone can see this, this is the perfect time for you to share with your mama, your cousin, tag them, share it on your page. I'm gonna be going through, I literally have notes on top of notes on top of notes. I'm gonna be going through, um, what does the stimulus package mean for you? So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing that. So um, let me just start it here. Like I said, I'm gonna be starting a whole bunch of watch parties. So just bear with me. And like I feel free to do the same. So it's gonna be really important. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then we good to go. Then we Gucci, all right? So what have you heard about the stimulus package? What questions do you have? I'm actually gonna go through all the things that I think are gonna pertain to you and I'm gonna take questions at the end. Um, does that work for you? Does that work for you? All right, I'm also gonna share this on my page. Just real quick, like I said, use this time to share on your pages. I'm just gonna be looking and start. All right, so that's good for me. And one more thing to start, I'm gonna start um, Instagram. But yes, what questions do you have? You know, what are you concerned about? What are you worried about? Um, yeah, just riddle me that. Let me leave. Okay. All right, you guys are already asking great questions. All right, so I am Tiffany the Budgetista, your favorite financial educator. And with all the ups and downs with coronavirus, it's just getting real. And this care package, the CARE Act that the president signed recently, there's a lot of questions about, you know, um, who gets this money, how, and so I really wanted to go live to address it. Like I said, if you haven't already, please, please share. And now I'm gonna go live on Instagram. All right, and then we are good to go. All right, awesome. Okay, IG is here, everybody here. The whole party's here. So you might see me looking down, you might see me looking up, because I'm trying to address everybody at the same time. So again, welcome. I am Tiffany, the Budgetista, and I promised you that I was going to go live on today to talk about the stimulus package and what does it mean for you. Like I said, tell your friend, tell your mama and them and your cousins, share, share, share. I literally have been writing notes and notes and notes, not just for, like, honestly, for myself, like all my family, my friends, everybody's been calling and asking me. And I thought that, you know what, why don't I just do a live to address so many questions that you guys have had? Um, so let's get started because IG, you know, IG's a hater. It only lets me be on for a little bit before it kicks me off. All right. So first, let's talk about the CARE Act and what does it mean? It was a $2 trillion stimulus bill in response to COVID-19. We know this. So there's an estimated $3 billion of the $2 trillion that's going to be set aside for taxpayers in the form of cash payments. So what does that mean? I mean, they set aside a chunk of money for me, you, and, and almost everyone. And I'm going to share who and how. Again, I'm going to take questions at the end because it's a lot, a lot. Okay, so it's a one-time currently anyway. It's a one-time payment to Americans, and it's honestly it should arrive according to uh, Treasury Secretary um, uh, Sec Treasury Secretary uh, Stephen Munchen. I always think his hand's name is funny, Munchen. Um, anyway, so you're looking at it to arrive via check or direct deposit, depending on how you got your refund, your last refund. Um, you're looking for it to arrive mid-April. They're saying about April 17th, okay? All right, so here's the part that's really important. People want to know, how much am I going to get? How much am I going to get? Sidebar, did you share this? Share it. So how much am I going to get? And so this is how much um, you, are, you are likely to get. And let me say this. I am not your financial expert. 
I'm not your financial guru. I'm your financial girlfriend. That means I'm sharing this just as a regular chick on the um, Instagram, Facebook, social media streets, um, and that you should always lean into your financial planning, your financial advisor, your tax person, your CFO, your, you know, in your life, aka sue somebody else. I'm just sharing, just sharing what I know. And so, okay, let's get that out the way. I forgot my disclaimer. All right. So um, <clears throat> here's how you're going to be able to decide if you're going to get, or you're going to be able to figure out how much you're going to get. So it's going to be based upon what's called your adjusted gross income. And how you're going to find your adjusted gross income is, you know, when you file your taxes, it's usually a, a 1040, 1040EZ, right? So if you look at line 8B, 8B on your tax return, the last tax return that you did, it will be there. That is your adjusted gross income. And if that adjusted gross income, if you single ready to mingle and that adjusted gross income is under $75,000, then you will be likely approved for the maximum, which is $1,200 in the one-time payment. If it's over 75,000, you still can get payment. Sidebar, if you don't have a pen and paper, I don't, then you never did a live with me. Yo, I used to be a school teacher for 10 years. Run, go get your pen and pad right now, for real. Like it's gonna be so much information. Like I, I literally have this much information. I'm gonna see if I can get through most of it. So if you don't have pen and paper, you play with yourself. Congratulations. All right. So if you make up to as a single ready to mingle person up to, you can make up to $99,000 of your adjusted gross income. And for those of you who come late, catch up, ask people in the comments, I don't said that I'm saying it once, right? So if you make up to $99,000, um, anything above 99,000 as a single ready to mingle, you're not getting any money because they're like, you good sis, you good. Now for the, for the um, couples, now there's two types of couples. There's married, so if you're married like moi, if you as a couple and you were married and you filed jointly, this is an important distinction. So married to file jointly and you're a couple, then they're going to look at your adjusted gross income line 8B, like I said, on your 1040 tax form. Um, and they're going to look and say, um, did you make up to, it's just double the numbers, 150. So if you made 150 or less, then you'll get the full amount as a married couple, which is just double the 1200, 2400. And if you make if you made over um, 150 as a married couple, um, then you can make up to 198 and still receive $198,000 and still receive the $2,400. Now, if you're married, but you filed separately, they're going to be looking at you like a single. So that means like, let's just say your husband, you know, you're married five separately, your, your husband made, I don't know, 175 and you made 30, then you were married, but you filed separately. And as a result, they'll look at you separately. And so you that 75,000, that single household threshold is gonna apply to you. Okay, awesome. All right, so what else? You might be seeing me looking down because like I said, I have so much I'm trying to get through. Now here's an important one that I haven't seen people talk about. What if you filed head of household? Meaning like you shacking up. I mean, I'm not gonna judge because I have shacked up before. Meaning that you are in a, a relationship, a couple them, but you're not married. So then that means your number is um, collectively, your number is the household. As long as you, as married, filing, um, head of, not married, but head of household, your if you make under one twelve, then you will get the, then you'll get your 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 full payment. And you made over as a, as a household. If you made over one hundred and thirty six thousand five hundred dollars as a household, and you you are filing head of household, then you won't get any money. So know this: the numbers to know are seventy five thousand singles. 112 um, married head of, I mean, um, head of household and um, one nine, uh, no, um, 150. That is the, if you made below that, you're getting money. You're getting all your money. If you made above as a single, um, if you made above, um, uh, dang, my, my memory's killing me. If you made above 150 as a single, no, no. If you made above 99 as a single, if you made above 198 as a married couple and you made above 136.50, I'm 500 as a um, head of household that you don't get anything. Now let's bring in the babies, okay? So here's how the babies, well, let's see. Um, so I know people are asking, how am I gonna get my money? Same way that you normally get your refund. If you get direct deposit, direct deposit. If you get a check, it'll be a check looking at mid-April for it to come to you. You don't have to do anything. The federal government and the IRS are gonna work together. They're gonna look at your tax return. Now here's critical component. They're going to look at your either 2019 tax returns. If you haven't done your 2019 taxes, 
it's okay. They'll look at 2018. If you haven't done your 2018, what, what you ate on, you, you might not get your check. Go do your 2018 taxes, okay? So we're gonna look at one of those two things. Um, so here's, let's talk about the babies. If you have a child that um, is under the age of 17, so they're 16, um, then you will be qualified for, and you qualify. So you can't have children and not qualify. So if you make too much, you're not getting nothing for your babies either. But if you have a child and they are um, 16 and younger, so under the age of 17, then you can get um, $500 per child. There is no maximum. So if you have 10 babies, Kiki, why are you under the age of 16? You're going to get 500 times 10. Okay. Okay. So, but here's the part that a lot of parents are mad at. If you have a baby that is 17 or 18 and they're not in college, um, then you're not going to get anything likely for your child. Because, and then I, honestly, I don't know why. I did as much research as I could figure out. I don't know why. But let's just say you do have a child that is um, 19, 20, 20, up to 23, and they are your dependent. Um, but they are working, right? But they don't really have taxable income. The thing is, it's unfair. It's, to me, it seems like that older children, not only can they not receive money, but they also, um, you can't receive money for them. But if you do happen to have a child that is eligible to file taxes on their own, then they could potentially file independently and receive money for themselves. Now, here's the thing. If that child is your dependent, Meaning like, you know, you, they, they 22 years old, but they're still in, they're in college and they're your dependent. Adults who are dependent, and I'm going to go through who's not eligible, but adults who are dependent are not eligible. Um, so they're not eligible to receive and you're not eligible to receive for them. So there's that caveat that doesn't seem fair and that's just, it is what it is. Um, so but what you don't want to have is your adult child who was 22, 20, file their taxes. And if filing your taxes is actually going to lower your refund overall. Like, because this money we're getting is not going to affect your 2020 refund, you know, a 2019 refund. It's not going to affect that refund at all. So you want to sit down with your tax professional, see what, what makes sense. If I let Junior file for himself and he's 21, he grown, you know, and he gets his 1200 back to the household for us, you know, does that make sense? Or do I, um, saying, you know what, Junior, you just don't get nothing, but I get to still claim you as a dependent and it helps my taxes and helps the family overall. Okay. Yes. Um, even, even people who have, I see somebody asked about special needs. Yes. If you have, if you dependents are not able to receive and it, it's, it's looking like from all the research that I've seen is that you are not able to receive money for adult dependents that are depending on you. And, you know, don't shoot the messenger. That's just what I've, that's just what I've seen. All right. Let's see. Um, is my check taxable? I've seen that a lot. No, this is not taxable income. So you're not going to have to pay taxes on this later. Your refund is not going to be affected by the stimulus. Um, retired seniors are eligible as long as they meet other criteria. Um, so, so if you're getting a social security check, um, yes, you, you know, but let's just say you don't file taxes because your social security does not you don't, you don't make enough via social security to file taxes. They will still, for most people, they're using the tax um, returns to look. But if you get social security, they're going to be working with social security, the federal government as well, to see if you're eligible. So yes, if you're a senior citizen, you get social security, um, you still might be eligible as long as you're not, you're not earning more um, than what's been stipulated in this um, stimulus package, which I went over before. Now let's talk about who ain't getting no money. Ooh, 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 ooh. And like I said, if you, I want, if I'm going to answer, I see your question. Well, I'm answering as many as I can. Um, if you know, you heard me say the answer, because I can't go, like we have limited time, please answer for people in the comments. Okay. All right. And I'm going to take major questions at the end. Now here's who ain't getting a check. Come closer. Someone hit me this before. Brother Jonathan, you owe back child support. You're not getting a check. If you owe back child support, you are not getting a check. Sorry. But if you owe back taxes and you owe student loans, like federal student loans, you will still get your check. Hallelujah. Okay. On to that. So if you if you owe back child support, nope. Um, if you have children who are 17 or 18 years old, and nope. Um, if you have a, a college student between the ages of 19 and 23, nope. Um, if you are a adult and you're claimed as a dependent on someone else's taxes, nope. If you are a non-resident alien, um, those without, in other words, you don't have a green card. Nope. 
um, if you're making more than 99,000 um, as an individual, uh, 198 as a as a as a couple, as a married couple, and one um, 36,500 36, as head of household. Nope. And if you have not filed your 2018-2019 tax return, okay. All right. Set it. You got it. You got it. Good. Okay. So what should you do with the money? We have a lot. Like I said, we still got to go over unemployment, taxes, retirement. What is all this, this, this? So we ripping and running. Y'all got it? Good. All right. So this is what I would do with my stimulus check. You ready? You have your pens out? I told you, if you didn't get a notebook, honestly, like I, said, I used to teach for 10 years and I have my master's in education because a sis got knowledge. Okay. And so, um, yeah, so honestly, you need a notebook. There's so much that I have to go through. So here's what I would do with my check. One, I would pay any bills that are not all the bills, but all the essential bills that are due or maybe a little bit of, um, you don't have to pay them back. So I just saw you like, do you have to pay this money back? No, it's not taxable and you don't have to pay it back. So um, so what do you do with the money? This is what I would do with the money. What you gonna do with the money is what you gonna do with the money, but you ask the budget. So one, I would pay these essential bills if, if, if I didn't have the money to pay them. Let's just say I lost my job or my, my income was furloughed or um, my income was decreased. I would pay these essential bills. And this is how you know it's essential. If I don't pay this bill, will I be unhealthy? If I don't pay this bill, will I be unsafe? So I would pay those essential bills. Right. And I would prioritize my necessities first. Sometimes you got to say, I ain't got it. I'm sorry, Verizon. I ain't got it. I'm sorry. You know, um, cable. I ain't got it. I mean, I have said that before. It's a hard thing to say. But right now you need to make sure you are healthy. You and your family are healthy and you and your family are safe. So I would prioritize that money and put it toward that first. OK. All right. Second thing I would do with my money is I would save. So let's just say my bills are not late. I'm good. And I'm, when I talk about bills, I'm not talking about debt that you owe Sprint from three years ago. We're not worried about Sprint right now. We ain't worried about Sprint right now. That's not what this is about. We need to, we need to be strong now. They just, they've been waiting. They can't wait. Okay. So I, second of all, I would save. That means um, now more than ever, honestly, having an emergency savings account is, is critical. I've been preaching this. We're not going to judge. So having an emergency savings account is critical. So ideally the goal is six months worth of emergency savings. And emergency savings means, I call something like your noodle budget. Drop down and get your noodle on, girl. Drop down and get your noodle on, girl. Hey, drop down and get your noodle on. So what is your noodle budget? I want you to remember back in the day when you used to have to eat ramen noodles. At some point, we was all broke. I'm convinced, right, for most people. So your noodle budget is, remember when you were broke and you were like, you know what I'm gonna do? Cause I know I did it like two days ago. I'm gonna retighten my own locks. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take them nails off. I don't need it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna learn how to do my own eyebrows, which I did not learn. That's why they're full now. Um, so your noodle budget is what is the what is your baseline budget? Your budget of just necessities. Figure out how much you have to absolutely spend to keep your life going month to month. So let's just say your normal budget you spend five thousand dollars a month, the mortgage, the kids, this or that. But your noodle budget is if you cut out all the non necessities, your noodle budget is four thousand dollars a month then I would have six times four, $24,000. That's ideally what you're working toward in your emergency savings. Because if you lose your job or your furloughed or whatever, you need to be dropping down anyway to your noodle budget instantly. So you know, okay, I have six months worth of emergency money to, 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 to live off of. So that's what you want. If I had my bills were already up to date, I would use my my um, stimulus check and, and, and put it toward my emergency savings account put it in an online only savings account um, where you're gonna get more interest than a big bank. Big banks are paying nothing. Zero on zero on zero on zero, piece of a penny. Um, I would put it in an online only savings account. Um, you're gonna look for, I like this website called magnifymoney.com, magnifymoney.com. Um, and I look for a bank that gives an A, and that they give an A to. I look for a bank FDIC insured so I can, in case this bank closes, I get my money. I look for a bank that, um, uh, that, that pays the highest interest rate, which is not that much right now, but pays the highest interest rate and has the lowest deposit requirement. That means, um, you know, um, in order for me to earn this interest rate, I don't have to keep $10,000 in this bank. Or I don't have to put $10,000 to open up this bank account. So lowest deposit requirement. All right. All right. So that's two, I would say with this stimulus money, but let's just say check bills paid check, Tiffany, I'm good on savings. Now what? Then 
normally, normally during time, like I'm big on paying down debt. I'm completely debt free. I own this house with my husband, debt free, no mortgage. Okay. We own a investment property, debt free, no mortgage. Okay. We own two cars, debt free, no car, no. Okay. I believe debt free. I'm big on paying off debt, but not during pre recession. I'm not big on being aggressive of paying off debt during pre-recession because you need to have a strong cash position, meaning you need to have a good lump sum of cash saved just in case, right? So I, I would not be paying triple double toward my credit card bill right now. I literally honestly probably be paying the minimum and then putting my money to save just in case stuff gets real, which it looks like it's getting, right? Like normally I would not tell you that. I'd be like, don't pay the minimum to your credit card. That's crazy. But but in times like this, I need to hold my cash like this. The debt can wait. Now I don't want to be behind. So I'm gonna give you a little minimum, but I need to keep cash on hand in case these people let me go down at the job I've complained about every week. Right. So but three, I'm saying that as a caveat, but three, if you have, remember I said, if, you, if you're, you've if you saved already, your bills are paid, student loans right now, if you have federal student loans, they are um, suspending interest rates until September 30th, 2020. What does that mean? Not only are they suspending interest rates for federal student loans, clear, federal. If you don't know what you have, call them and ask them. Federal student loans, not private student loans. So they're suspending payment automatically. So they're not even going to charge you. And they're suspending interest. So suspending payment is great if you need the money, right? So if you need to keep it close. But if you are good on savings and good on bills, I actually be a little bit more, I would probably be a little aggressive toward my student loans. You want to know why? Because normally you pay the student loans and then this part, you pay them $5 and they say, yeah, this is my right here. <laughs> You're like, wait, what? You know, you pay them $5 and maybe they keep this right here. And this is what goes to the student loans. But right now into September, all your five goes to your principal. And so it might be a good time if you're good on savings and you're good on bills to, to be a little bit more aggressive towards your student loans because all your money is going to go to that principal. And when it's all said and done, your, 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 um, your payment, when the interest does come back, your payment's going to be lower because your, your, your principal balance that the interest is based upon is down. So, but that's only if your savings is good and your bills are paid. So that's three. And then four, I would invest. If I've done all that, I don't have student loans. Like I don't have student loans anymore. Um, my savings is good. My bills are not late. If I was getting a check, then I would be setting aside that money to invest. If you're not sure how, um, you can just bump up money in your retirement account. Um, make sure you speak to HR or your, your financial advisor that's usually on your sheet. If you have, you know, you have a 401k or consider opening a target date fund. I've talked about target date funds so often. I'll try to do it quickly. A target date fund is a fund. Usually it's a mutual fund. And oftentimes it can be a retirement account. It doesn't have to be. It can just be a wealth account. You open it at like a, 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 a Vanguard, a Fidelity, a um, Charles Schwab. Um, and you're looking for the lowest um, fee, which is called the expense ratio. That is the fee they're charging you to manage your fund. That means expense ratios, normally like a financial advisor is going to charge you one, sometimes they really bug in one and a half percent of all the money that you, that you invest with them. Doesn't seem like much until at the end of your lifespan, you realize it's over $100,000. The expense ratio of most of these target date funds is less than 1%, like 0.09%, right? Meaning that they charge less money to manage your money, okay? What I like about target date funds is that you pick a target date when do you want this money? Is it by retirement? Is it 20 years from now? Whatever. You pick that year that you have in your head, and then you find the fund that's closest to that year. So you pick 2000, say you want to retire in 2038. The target date funds are every five years typically. So you would find the 2040 fund, right? Or the 2035 fund. And you put your money in the fund every, every pay period, just like you would do a savings account. And what I like about a target date fund is that it rebalances itself the closer you get to the target date. Because what people don't get about investing, why, it makes, why investing seems so overwhelming for most people, is that you, you're supposed to rebalance the closer you get to needing that money. So what does that mean? That if you are going to retire in 20 years and you don't need that money for 20 years, then your target date fund is going to be out there wilding. It's going to be like, hey! We invested in all these things because the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. And sis got 20 years, she be good. The closer you get to needing that money, target date funds like, oh snap, sis about to come back and get her money. We need to be more conservative the closer we get to the target date. And your target date fund does that balancing for you year after year. 
That's why I like it. You don't have to know how to do nothing else, but open it up. I usually like to choose a total stock market fund. So open it up, put your money in every, every pay period, pick your year, and it'll, it'll be balanced for you. Like you feel like, oh, I'm out here investing. You know, I'm out here investing. You know? okay. You're welcome. Some free game. All right. Let's talk about unemployment as it relates to the stimulus package. Now you can collect up to 39 weeks. Now that's 13 weeks more than most states. So I don't know your state. Don't ask me. So people are like, what about my state? Say, do a little work. Okay. So 13 more weeks than usual. So that's great. Um, you'll also get a federal boost. So here, if you have, if you have not applied, if you've been furloughed, you can apply for unemployment right now. Um, if you are a contract and independent contractor, you can Normally, they're like, you're on your own. You can apply for um, unemployment. Gig workers, you can apply for unemployment. Freelancers, you can apply for unemployment. Did you hear what I said? Independent contractor, gig worker, freelancer, furlough workers, normally you can't apply. You can apply for unemployment. And here's the thing. Right now, they're offering a federal boost. And what does that mean? That you get an additional $600 a week, sis? I know I'm calling you sis, but most of my audience are women. So, hey, brothers, I'm still finna say sis. $600 a week additional, but this boost is going to end July 31st. So what you waiting on, you need to apply for unemployment if you're furloughed and you're not making money or your money's been reduced because that extra boost is really going to be helpful. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about taxes. Woo, woo. Yes. It does include Uber drivers. I believe so. Are you considered an independent contractor with Uber? I believe so. I think they consider that a gig worker. It doesn't hurt to try. Um, all right, so I'm gonna be focused because we have a lot, we have a lot, we have a lot. All right, taxes. Okay, we all know that the new filing date for taxes, well, if you don't know, normally, I think it's like, what, April 15th? But the new filing date is July 15th. So that means you have an, ex you don't have to file for an extension. You won't be late. You just know that you have until July 15th to file your taxes. You have a whole month, you know, April. Oh, what is that? April, May, June, to oh, God, they gave me three months. <laughs> I forgot my months, okay? Um, so yes, if you have not shared this, if you have, you just hopping on, um, just come on, like, like get, get your people up to speed. Okay. Share, 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 tag your friends and you can watch this. This is going to be a recording. If you're watching on IG, you're like, uh, oh, save this live. Like you guys tell me all the time, it'll be saved on Facebook. I know you're a snob thinking that Facebook is like for old people where well, you're missing out because I go live there a lot. So if you're late, you can go on Facebook and watch the full amount, a full, full presentation. All right. Now let's talk about retirement. All right now, whew, this is, I feel a little indifferent about this, but um, if you've been diagnosed with COVID um, or you have a spouse that's been diagnosed or anyone who has been, if you've been adversely affected financially by COVID, you can withdraw, basically anybody, you can withdraw up to $100,000 from your 401k from your retirement account, um, penalty free. Now, normally, if you withdraw before retirement age, then there is a 10% um, penalty, meaning like, let's just say you normally withdraw um, a $10,000. They're going to say, girl, is it, you're 45. You tried it. We're taking of that 10,000. We're taking a thousand. You're getting nine. So that thousand gone. Right. And on top of that, there's taxes you have to pay. Now you still have to pay taxes if you don't put that money back. Um, but you won't get that 10% um, penalty. Right. And you, if you put that money back within three years, then you won't have to pay taxes on that money. So I don't suggest people take money from their future selves. That's just me. Um, unless you are hungry and homeless, then I can understand. But honestly, I really suggest that like, this is here. I really suggest that um, you leave that money alone unless you're hungry or homeless and you need it. Um, I would not be borrowing from my future self because one day grandma Tiffany is gonna be like, oh, cat food's on the menu again? Because young Tiffany didn't wanna, didn't wanna put that work in. Okay, got it, got it, got it. I'm not finna eat cat food. Mm -mm. So I rather bust my behind now. So old lady Tiffany, I call my old lady self Wanda because I feel like Wanda's a nice sassy old lady name because I'm so nice right now. But I feel like when I want to be old, I want to be a mean old lady that looks out the window talking about if your ball come in my yard again, I'm popping it. Okay. So um, <laughs> I like old naming my old lady self. What's your old lady name, your old man name? Let me know in the comments. Um, also, uh, like I said, you can take this a three-year window to, to withdraw that money. Um, I said that already. Okay, now let's talk student loan payments. Ooh, okay, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, student loan payments are suspended for federal student loans. I always say if you can um, leave those private student loans alone, unless you know, you're, you're in 
um, if you're in graduate school, it's very hard sometimes to get federal student loans if you're in grad school. But if you're an undergrad, leave them private student loans alone because there are laws in place if you have a federal student loan that they have to help you, you know, if things, if ish hits the fan. And now ish has hit the fan. And guess what? If you have a federal student loan payment, it's suspended until September 30th. You don't have to make any payments. They won't take your money until September 30th. And this is for federal, not for private. And during this period, no interest is going to accrue. That's why I said earlier, you can make extra payments and all your money is going to go to the principal. Um, let's see. So private student loans. There are some company companies that are offering some, you have to call and ask. These are private. They can make their own decisions. A private student loan is just a loan. It might as well be for a car, a house. People don't get that. Private student loans is just a loan. There's nothing special about a, a student loan that's gotten from a private bank. They're just giving you money for something that you want and you got to pay them back. So they're not, they're not beholden to these rules, but because they know that COVID is out here while and out, um, they're providing um, some relief. There might be an interest only payment that you might qualify for rate reduction, your interest rate reduction. You can ask about that extended repayment, meaning like they will lower your monthly amount and put it on the back end. So instead of you having to pay for the next 10 years, you got to pay for the next 15, but the payment, the monthly payment is lower. And there are some student loan providers. I heard, don't quote me, but I heard Sally Mack, maybe. I heard Freddie Mac, maybe are allowing uh, people to delay payments for up to 90 days. Don't just stop paying, call them yourself, okay? With, with the, with the uh, federal student loans, you, you can stop paying. Oh, well, but I would still call, but I believe that if, if most of us get that money taken out, this just won't take that money. But for private, don't just stop paying, call and ask for assistance, okay? Okay, 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 okay. And if you don't know if your, your loan is federal or private, call them. Is this a federal loan? This is a private loan. Log in. I know we had logged in a while. What is my middle name plus birthday? You know that's your, you know that's your password, right? So call them or look online and see if they're federal because there are some companies that have some federal loans and private loans under that company's name. So you want to make sure what you have. Let's talk about mortgages. Okay. So another reason sometimes federal federal money is um, a way to go because there is mortgage relief for homeowners, right? So they're requiring um, servicers of federally backed mortgages. So what is a servicer of federally backed mortgage? So let's just say you have your, 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 your loan through whatever bank, but it's an FHA loan or like a VA loan. That is a federally backed mortgage. If you have a federally, but not a conventional loan, let's be clear like FHA, VA, not a conventional loan. So if you have a federally backed mortgage, then um, you're going to be allowed to postpone mortgage payments um, if you can help to verify that you've had hardship due to COVID-19 and they can grant um, postponement for 180 days. That's six months of not having to pay that mortgage, okay? And you can get an additional six months if you really need it. So that is if you have a federally backed mortgage, if you don't know, call your loan provider, right? And then also, if you have a, if you have a federally backed mortgage, <laughs> excuse me, they cannot initiate any uh, foreclosures um, for 60 days. The 60 days began March 18th. So let's just say you've been late, you know, you're not doing COVID, you're late, you know what I mean? That means they can't, um, they can't, they can't foreclose upon you uh, March 18th to 60 days from March 18th from this month. So... There you have it, but that's with a federally backed mortgage, not not private mortgage, um, not a conventional loan. And they also, so if you're if you are a renter and your your landlord, and I don't even know how you figure this out, but if your landlord has a federally backed mortgage, they cannot evict you um, for 20, 120 days after the um, after 100. So this the, the CARES Act was signed on March twenty seventh. So for one hundred twenty days after March twenty seventh, they cannot evict you. What is that? Five months. Um, but honestly, I'm not sure. So that's like um, HUD loan, Fa um, Fannie Mae, um, uh, Freddie Mac, and other federal entities. So I'm not sure. And they can't charge any fees for penalties related to non-payment. I don't know if you need to do your get, get your Googles on, but you need to find out if you are a tenant, does my landlord have a, have a, a federally backed mortgage? Do they have an FHA loan? If they do, they can't charge you penalties. And if they do, they can't, um, they can't evict you and for five months. For 120 days, for 120 days, um, the 120 days started March 27th. Okay, all right. Who, who, who? Yes, you can go back and watch. I know some of you are like, ah, ah, to catch the whole thing. It's going to be a video. The best place to watch, honestly, is going to be on Facebook. 
um, because um, it's on my The Budget Nista Facebook page. Someone type in The Budget Nista, The Budget Nista Facebook page, uh, because I don't know, IG is, you know, it's only 24 hours. So, you know, you might want to come back two months from now and still watch it again. And it's just going to be up there. Just, you know, just look for this. Anyway, small businesses, let's talk. So, yeah, so small businesses, yo, they, they trying to hook you up, small business. Okay, so they have something called Paycheck Protection Program, PPP, okay? Um, and so also something called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. But let's talk with, let's start with PPP. So PPP, they set aside $350 billion um, for PPP and small businesses with, um, with employees under 500 employees can get up some loans up to $10 million. Um, and so the good thing about a loan is that there is forgiveness built in about this loan. So the way it works is they're going to be looking at your operating expenses, especially your like your payroll expenses, right? So this includes, which is important because a lot of the people who work for me are independent contractors. They're not W-2 employees. Right. That means you get a 1099. And usually people are like, nah, that's not an employee. You can't get no money for that. But you can now. So they're going to be looking at really your payroll expenses. That includes independent contractors, your 1099 folks, people who are not full time. Um, and so you get to include all those people because the purpose of PPP is they don't want people to be out of work. They don't want people to not have a paycheck. So they said, we're going to give you money to continue to pay the people you've been paying whether they are your full-time employees, whether they're independent contractors, whether they're part-time employees. We want you to continue to pay them and we will give you money. We will give you two and a half months worth of that money. So let's just say your, your operating expenses, your, your, your payroll was is um, $10,000 a month. So they're gonna give you 10,000 for month one, 10,000 for month two and half of 10,000 month three. So you're gonna get, you could potentially get up to um, $25,000 to use to keep those people employed. Now, here's the caveat. It is a loan unless, now, if you have 10 employees and they gave you that $25,000 to keep them employed and you fire half of those 10 employees eight weeks after you get your loan, right? Then you're going to owe half that 25,000. So if you keep all 10 employees for eight weeks after that loan originated, after you get that loan, then you get to keep that whole $25,000 and um, that's it. So it becomes a, it, it, it's a loan if you let go of people, but because they're trying to encourage people to keep people working, okay? All right, got it. All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see. The loans are to ensure small businesses can keep their employees. Um, if used to maintain employees during the eight weeks, yeah, I already said that. Um, if you don't maintain your employees, you got to get that money back. So they're looking at, so if you do, let's just say you're like, yo, this, this two and a half months worth of, of payroll is cute, but it wasn't enough for me to keep my employees going. And you do owe half of that money back. Um, it's looking like that payback is not going to, the, the interest on that payback is not going to exceed 4%. And I think they're giving you like 10 years as a business to pay back at a 4% interest rate. All right. Um, now let's talk about um, the, um, the $10,000 loan that people have been talking about. So there's something called the Economic Injury Disasters Loan. So that's the E-I-D-L-S, E-I-D-L-S, E-I-D-L-S. Okay, E-I-D-L-S. So, so you can apply for loans up to $200,000 without a need for a personal guarantee. So a personal guarantee is like your collateral, like, I'm a, I got it. Like, you know, like, let's just say someone to buy, I don't know, let me see. Ooh, let me let me use this because she is good for it. Let's just say this was this is my my personal guarantee. I'm gonna pay you back, and if I don't, you can take my unicorn. This is my house, right? And that's usually what they look for because they're like, since we need our money back. Um, so usually you have a personal guarantee, and um, they're like, well, this this is worth about two dollars, so we can give you a loan for two dollars because worst case scenario, you don't pay us back our two dollars, we take your unicorn. Okay, okay. So, but this time you don't have to have a personal guarantee and the loan is actually going to be based solely on your credit score. Now, here's all tea, no shade. That's what the kids say, right? All tea, no shade. Honestly, one of the things, I mean, for 10 years as a budgetista, I've been preaching the basics. I get it. Everybody wants the fancy, fancy, fancy stuff like, oh, I want to invest. I want to do stuff. I've been teaching the basics, which is a budget, savings, debt management, credit. I've been teaching that for 10 years on purpose because these are the foundations you're going to have to lean on in times like this when you need it most. Uh, you see how I got serious? This is like teacher Tiffany voice. 
Like they show them you're acting up. I can't spank you like your mama, but I want to. Okay. So that's that voice I'm giving you now. So here's the thing. This loan, although you don't need to provide a personal guarantee, they're going to be approving this solely based on your credit score. So you've been like, I don't care about my credit score. Right? There are some financial gurus who will tell you credit scores don't matter. Nobody cares about credit scores until right now. Now, credit scores do matter. If you're if you're a United States citizen, credit scores do matter. Sometimes it's more important than the money you have in your bank. And so your credit score does matter. So borrowing money up to $200,000 for this EIDLS, -E um, a disaster loan, that's economic injury disaster loan. Um, so they're going to be basing it on your credit score. Bars, you can also receive an emergency cash grant of ten thousand dollars. This is for businesses that can be that be that can be forgiven if you use that money on paid sick leave, maintaining payroll, increased um uh increased costs due to supply chain disruptions. Meaning, like you get your stuff from China, you can't get it from China right now because COVID. Um, on your mortgage or lease payments or repaying oblig obligations that you couldn't meet because you lost revenue because of COVID. COVID-19. So you can get basically $10,000 in free money if you use it for those things, like a pay paid leave, payroll. Basically, they're wanting you have $10,000 available to you um, for an emergency money, and um, but they want you to use that money basically to stay in business, okay? Now, here's the thing. Most big banks and other banks um, will be the ones dispersing these loans. So you can go to sba.gov. That's SBA for Small Business Association. Small business. SBA girl, you know that. Small business, small business SBA um, dot GOV to get um, the application for both of these things. Um, I said, get your money, you know, get your money, save your business. So many, your, your, your own a daycare center. Oh, I didn't even tell you this. Oh, I, forgot, I forgot this part. This part is what is so important. I can't believe I forgot either. Right on here. So, um, what's so great about this is that. This is not just, um, this money is not just for people who own small businesses in the traditional sense. If you're a sole proprietor, you can apply. If you're an independent contract, you get a 1099, you can apply. If you're a nonprofit, you can apply. Really, almost anybody with like a business-ish, it seems like can apply, um, as long as you don't have more than 500 employees. And even then there's some loopholes that I've seen online, okay? All right. Um, and and what the, what's happening now is there's not going to be a lot of red tape. Now, here's the thing. I've already called my bank. They don't have the money yet. They don't even have the stuff yet. So their phone, I was on the phone, hour, or like phone um, waiting for like two hours. And um, so, yeah, they don't have, they don't, they don't have the money yet, but I would still, you could still apply online. You could print out your application. The more information you have, lean into your financial professional. You have an accountant, a CFO. Who does your taxes? This is also one of these times when having Raheem and them from around the block, oh, that's a good idea. You might want to invest in some people, some real people who know what they're doing, you know, because it's times like this that um, you're going to need that. Um, so yes, you can, you can apply online, but know that it's going to be your bank. So most big banks are going to be able to do this, but it's going to be your bank that's going to be really dispensing that money. I mean, everyone's going to be applying. So you want to make your application as robust as possible. Like if you haven't done your 2018 business taxes, do them. Um, if you haven't done your 2019 business taxes, make sure that they're done. You know, if you don't have a separate, if you, this is now the time, because I have been there, so I'm not, you know, even shading you on this, but if you have a business and your money and your, your, your um, personal money and your business money is in the same bank account, it's time to change your ways. You need to operate more like a business. Now you have to separate your business checking from your personal checking, because in doing so it allows um, whoever is going to be like, whether it's now or later, it allows them to really see what's happening with your business and treat you accordingly. Um, so whoosh, we got it now. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Let's take some questions. I know because IG is going to kick me off in a minute anyway. I know I have like nine minutes. Um, all right. Okay. 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 Um, what if you just started a business, Sarah? No, I believe you had your business had, 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 had to have started in February, but don't quote me on that. Um, so no, if you just started a business, because remember, this is for businesses that are affected by COVID. So if you started a business today and you're not making any money, that's not COVID's fault. You just started. You see what I mean? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. 
Um, let's see. I'm just looking to see. Yes, I'm saving it on FB. FB. If you're watching this live, I'm saving it on the Facebook page. The Budget Lisa Facebook page. I'm going to save it there. So you can watch it again and again, IG. And then even you on Facebook watching across the lands. Um, let's see. I'm just looking like you guys have questions. Um, so ask your question. Someone said that's a great question. Ask it again. Is it okay to buy a home now? Uh, Bria, Bria Lorianne, um, I probably wouldn't buy a home right now. Um, unless I'm like closing on Thursday. Here's why, because we looking like a recession. We, you can't call it a recession just yet because it hasn't been six months. So a recession is six months of, of, um, of consistent economic decline of over, in, over a six month period, six months or more. And so we haven't had that yet because it's just started. So if we enter into a recession, typically you see housing um, prices drop. So you don't want to buy at the top of the market. The top of the market means you buy a house that is worth this, recession hits and that house is now worth this. I did that my first house when I was 25, I bought a condo for 220, recession hit, two years later, my house is worth 180. Uh, not even, not even, 150, hey, 150, 150. So I honestly wouldn't be looking for a house now unless it's such an amazing deal because like it's a foreclosure or something like that. But I wouldn't be looking for a house now. Um, oh, any info on car payments? So now people are asking about re refinancing, refinancing, refinancing. Let me get some tea. Hold on. Some tea. What does that say? Yes to black. Okay. Um, so I'd be looking like even now, my husband and I, I'm looking at, so even though we don't have our mortgage on this house, um, if I can get uh interest rate is close to 3% or lower, then I will pull out the equity in this house and I will invest because I can make more investing than what it would cost me to pay that money back. So I can conservatively say that maybe I'll make six, seven, 10% investing to pay back 3%. So there's a 7% difference of like money I can make. Um, so looking, I would be, you should always be looking about refinancing, even if, you know, you are, you know, like, even if you weren't thinking about it, like you should be looking at refinancing, like I'm always looking at the interest rates because if your interest rate is 6% and now it's now three, refinance. So you can have a lower payment and you're paying these people less money. So um, yeah, you should be looking at refinancing if it's going to, to, to save you. I like the refinancing with um, credit unions because they typically have better interest rates because most of them are nonprofits. And as a nonprofit, their only um, uh, desire as far as money is to make enough to cover their bills. Now, while big banks, they're looking to make a profit, so they're going to be charging you more. Um, uh, I'm just looking some of you guys' questions. Um, investment options. I shared that earlier. Um, I mean, if you know how to invest in, if you know how to invest in the market, you know I, I could do that. If you don't, I would take a class on it. If you don't know how to do none of that, I would open up a target date fund. I'm not going to go over what that is again because I did already. You can Google, or so you can watch this again. Target date fund. Um, I'm just reading. Uh, 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 uh. I'm just like, what do you guys have questions? Okay, what about credit card debt? Will the interest rate be going down on those? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. So here's the thing. The Fed have cut the interest rate down to 0%, but that's not for you. That's for the banks. Um, so some, typically when they cut the interest rate down, it trickles down to us. So let's just say your interest rate is 6%, you know, like as a normal consumer and the Fed and then, and then the bank's interest rate is 3% as the bank and the Fed cuts the interest rate for the bank down to zero. It sometimes will trickle down to us. And so maybe our 6% interest rate on average is now 4%, but we ain't never get no 0% interest rate, like from like banks. I mean, pigs do fly, so maybe, but I'm just saying when you hear the Fed cut the interest rate at 0%, that's for banks. You know, um, and and also oftentimes for for businesses, but not typically for consumers. Um, da, 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 like, um, okay, so good question, Maharish. Is this stimulus check an advance on next year's tax return? It is not, but um, no, it is not. It is not an advance on on next year. It's considered like a tax credit. They did some old loophole of stuff, but it's not a, um, an advance on on next year's uh, tax return. Um, um, uh, let me see. My house, my aunt has a house. She needs a lot of repairs. How should we fund a major repair? She has no credit. Um, I, I don't know. Um, 
uh, if you have a house, if she, she has to start building credit. So, in, I mean, credit you can build in the next maybe six months. She has to start building credit, um, unless she, unless she's going to add someone on. So, what she could do is someone in your family, uncle, sister, whoever that does have good credit um, could help. Although I do not, I do not, um, I do not believe in co-signing, especially during times like this, because people might lose their job. They might be a great payer backer and then lose their job. Um, so, if I was going to um, help my aunt with my credit so she could borrow money that I would want to be added as a co-owner of that house. That's your collateral. Um, if you owe the IRS, you'll still get your money. The only people that are not going to get their money who owe is people who owe um, child support. So if you owe child support, then you're not going to get uh, the stimulus check. But if you owe student loans, if you owe the IRS, even back taxes, you're still going to get your, your stimulus check. Um, let me see. Should I de defer my federal student loans if I'm in the middle of rehabbing? Well, if you're in the middle of rehabbing, I would probably call them and see, like, because you're right in the middle of rehabbing. So I don't even know if they're going to let you defer, but I do know that they're, they're suspending payments until September 30th. So finish your rehab, ask them, like, because I think even those rehab payments will pause until September 30th. Um, so you don't, you're not even going to, if they're federal, you're not even going to have to defer. They will do that for you. Um, yeah, if you're not going to be receiving money, if your child is over the is, is 17 or older, um, and even if your child is independent, and if your child is dependent, they're also not going to, because you can have your child be a dependent up until age 23 if they're, if they're a student. So if they're dependent and up until 23, they're not going to get any money themselves. If they are 23 and they file their taxes, then yes, um, then they would be eligible for money if they file their own independent taxes. I'm just looking at what you guys are saying. Should I use federal student loan payments on the private while they have deferment? I would, that's actually a good idea, Tiffany. I didn't think about that. So if you have federal student loans or private student loans, and let's just say federal student loans, your payment is 200 bucks a month and your private student loans is 200. If Tiffany, your current bills are up to date and you have a good amount of savings. Um, if you don't have a good amount of savings, I would put that 200 from my federal student loans into a savings account. I'd rather you have savings and be a little late on stuff, honestly. At this point in time, it's not always like that, but when, when recessions hit, they, they are, they are um, estimating, it could be anywhere from 20 to 30% unemployment. That's unheard of, we don't even know what that means. Like ask your grandma what 30% unemployment means. That's the, the Great Depression. When they used to save like um, foil, you know how you got, you got your old grandparents still saving sandwich bags and foil, you wanna know why? There was nothing. That's 20 to 30% unemployment. That is really hard times. And more than anything, I would love for you to be debt free, but I don't care about that during really hard times. You know what I care about? That you have food to eat in a safe place to stay and you have access to your medicine. And you know what you need for that? Money. So if you've given all your money to pay, I'm not saying you shouldn't pay your bills, absolutely. But if you're overpaying them, which normally I think is a good idea, like, you know, paying more than the minimum, then you, that money, that money that you paid more than the minimum, it's not going to be helpful if you lose your job and you don't have a place to stay, you don't have food to eat. So they call it protecting your capital. Capital is money. Okay. No, your daughter's 22, a college student, and she's my dependent. Will she receive? Nope. You're not going to receive any money for your daughter. Eva, she has to be, she's over the age of 16. Um, let's see. Yes, 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 yes. Let me see. All right. I mean, some of you guys are asking the same questions I kind of reviewed already. Um, so I answered a lot of the questions about singles. Yes, if you're single and okay, you'll still get money. If you, you'll get all the money if you make under seventy five thousand dollars, you'll get no money if you make over um, ninety nine thousand. Um, yeah, I think. All right. Well, I mean, a lot of this stuff I answered already. So I hopefully this was really helpful. Share, share, share. Oh, I will say this next week. I'm going to be doing a free financial series. I did one, COVID in your money. I did one two weeks ago. It, was really, it went really well. So I'm going to do another one. I'm getting bringing my fave financial friends out. Um, and they will be teaching um, day one, how to get a job during these crazy times. Yes, it's possible. That's easy. Um, day two, Ash Cash, my boy, is going to be teaching mindset and money. Because you right now, it's critical to get your mindset right. My girl Dawn, um, I'm going to ask her to teach. She is a naturalist. I'm, we have things like, even now, you see me drinking this tea? Because 
Dorna was like teaching us, how do you build your immune system with the stuff you have at home? So build your immune system on a budget. Um, because even if you do get um, COVID-19, if you have a strong immune system, you can still be okay. So I've been really trying to like drink my music, limes, turmeric, all things. So she's going to teach that on Wednesday. And then Thursday, my girl, Nicole, is going to teach how do you negotiate? So you should be negotiating with all your service providers. Get those, you know, can I pay later? Can I pay late? Can I not be like affected? Like negotiate, negotiate, negotiate. So that'll be next week. Um, and, and so I know some of you guys have asked me, I actually have an online school. Where's my thingy? I don't know where I put this paper. I have an online school and I usually have a paper. So some of you guys want like deeper information while you're home. So a few things I do have, this is one of my favorite books. It's still a baddie, a goodie. The one week budget is available on Amazon. Um, so you can order it. It's, this is this budget system that I have used to go from a negative six worth income, a negative six figure income to now I'm a baby millionaire. Yes. That means I have an, um, um, not income, um, net worth. That means my net worth is just over seven figures. Um, and I'm completely debt free. So like I live fairly simple. Y'all know me. I mean, like I live in a target take. Okay. Um, but I also too have an online school, which I can't find the paper, but whatever. I'm just going to say it out loud because I have a little bit of a lisp. So sometimes y'all not be understanding me and stuff. I was looking for the paper with this on it. I don't know what it is. So I have an online school called the Live Richer Academy. And I have all these experts who are way smarter than me, way smarter than me, teach their specialty from you want to learn how to invest in real estate. You want to learn how to um, buy stocks. You want to learn how to um, enter into retirement um, successfully. You want to learn how to state plan, all the things. These are the people that helped me get my seven figure net worth inside the Live Richer Academy. If you were to go to Live richeracademy.com you asked about the book live richeracademy.com if you were to go to live richeracademy.com you would and i have it right here somewhere you would um uh pay the full amount but i've been like um passing out my 40 percent discount link like candy because people have really been asking and so that link for 40 percent off the live richer academy we have a live lesson every single week um so like what i'm doing now this is what we do inside the live richer academy so the 40 percent off link is www.joinlra.com. I would do it on my phone to make sure. Let me say, let me check. Make sure it's still up because it was down the other day. And I was told my team, put that back up so these people could get their help. Um, join, someone type that in. Join. Am I still here? Can y'all still see me on? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, did I mess up? No, I didn't. Okay, joinlra.com. Join J O I N L R A dot com. Sometimes I have it on the little. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at good. Because sometimes you're like, what? Join L R A dot com. This is going to give you 40% off the Literature Academy. We have classes on classes on classes. We're actually going through a re, re, like we're revamping the inside to make it even easier to navigate. Um, I just have, uh, what I love about the Academy is that we have a class every single week of an amazing expert, we call it Ask the Expert. And all the classes from the history of the Academy are still inside the Academy. You can learn all the things. You can learn how, you know, how to manage your money with your honey, how to raise financially um, fit kids, side hustle with Sandy, where she teaches you like a hundred ways to make money from home. Um, oh, student loans, how do you get them even just erased? Natalie Baptiste teaches that. Um, so I'm trying to think of some of my favorite classes. Tila, trade your nine to five. She teaches you stocks. Kevin teaches you about your 401k and how to make sure that it's strong. Um, estate planning with my attorney, Tony. How to start. We have so many business classes, so many. Um, so join LRA.com gives you 40% off of the Live Richer Academy. Um, so yeah, this is, like I said, my book, The One Week Budget. It will be helpful on Amazon. I have a ton of books on Amazon, quite honestly. Like... A ton of books on Amazon, like that will really be helpful. Um, I've been out here, y'all, ten years. So, like for example, I've got the Literature Challenge Savings Edition on Amazon. If you just type in Budgetista, you're gonna see all of this. I've got the Literature Challenge Credit Edition on Amazon. I've got the Literature Challenge Net Worth Edition on Amazon. I've got the Literature Challenge. These are the fundamentals on Amazon. And because I'm Vanna Black tonight. My fave, this is brand new. Dun, da, da, da. I'm most proud of this, I'm not gonna lie. This is my new baby, her name is Molly. Isn't she so adorable? I just love Molly. Isn't she so adorable? So your babies need financial education. And so I wrote, I used to be a preschool teacher for 10 years. That's why I'm so fun and silly. So I wrote um, my first uh, children's book, but it's a financial 
based children's book, but age appropriate financial education. So what does that mean? So I'm not saying here's a dollar. Instead, in this book, you she you learn um, less versus more, giving, donating, sharing. Um, so these are pre-financial education lessons that are critical for little ones. So the book ideally is for ages three to seven. Um, it's available for pre-order at Molly, so M A L I more.com. But ain't she so cute? Let me just show you a few little pictures on the inside. I'm so proud of this, honestly. Um, because I'm like, I have a real book, y'all. Like, look at some of these pictures. Mm -hmm. Look at Molly. Look at Molly with her little dress. Ain't she so look at Molly get her wig done. That mama look a little like me on purpose. <laughs> And so I'm super excited about Molly. So here's like the character page. There's Molly, her little um, best friend, Bunny Winnie. There's me. <laughs> That's her daddy looking like my husband. And this is her little brother, Malcolm. And so I love this, this book. It's like a real book. Like, look, look, real, real, look, look. Because, you know, sometimes I hate, as a preschool teacher, I would hate when you would take off the dust, dust jacket and it'd be blank because they was being cheap. Not over here. We ain't cheap over here. The book still got, still got the picture on it. Still got the picture. So you can... Um, you can order you a copy um, at mollymore.com. You can pre-order it. I'm sending it to them. I mailed them out in April because it's not out officially yet. But yeah, that's the back. Look, look at Molly. She has a little t-shirt on that says future president. <laughs> Get into it. So mollymore.com. I hope tonight was awesome. Whew. I hope that you, you know, you found just some solace and that was helpful today. Um, so yeah, all the rest of my books are available on Amazon and this one at mollymore.com. And again, if you want to join my online school where I drop, like what, the people who are inside the academy, ooh, they're used to all of this. My stuff is, you can only see my office. They're used to all this. Like I said, 40% off. Do not, you can go to uh, livericheracademy.com. But again, you're going to see full price there. But at joinlra.com, you'll see 40% off. They're used to this. This is what we do every week. Um, and so if you're needing that in your life, it's there and available to you. Again, share this video. And um, yeah, I'm, as usual, I'm here to be of service and of help to you. And um, yeah, thank you for allowing me to help y'all. And IG, thank you for letting me stay on. Because IG, stay being a hater, but not, to, not on tonight. Not on tonight. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. <laughs>